Hello everyone and welcome to Fair Sports Update. I'm your host Rob Bentley and thanks for tuning in. On today's show we'll recap an exciting Bulldog football victory. Hard to believe but basketball season is here. We'll talk Bulldog men's basketball and we'll update you on Bulldog volleyball. First up, head coach Tony Anise and Coach, uh, welcome back from Houghton, Michigan. Uh, a long trip, but congratulations on the on the victory. Yeah, it's good to be back, and uh, yeah, thank you. It's a great victory. First win for Ferris State uh, in Houghton at Sherman Field in, in 15 years, going all the way back to 1998. Uh, uh, just talk about the performance of your team, uh, a comeback victory by a score of 30 to 27. Yeah, I characterize those as like mental barriers because there's no justification for us going up there, and it taken it 15 years for us to beat them. So. Uh, but yeah, it was a good, uh, good, solid comeback. Um, really struggled early to, to get things rolling. We moved the ball effectively and then uh, shot ourselves in the foot. Had some key turnovers. Defensively, we were not nearly as good in the first half as we were in the second half. Second half, we held them to two first downs, I think 60 yards of total offense. And then we finally, in the second half, took control of the game and uh, um, you know took seven and a half minutes, minutes off the clock to, to finish it. And, and uh, you know that that's always gratifying to do that. As we go to some of the highlights of, of Saturday's game, a uh, cold, windy day. Uh, how did that wind and, and that cold factor into the game plan? Well, it's the first time in my career I think that I think uh, you know wind is wind and cold is to our advantage. Uh, you know we're sixth in the nation in rushing yards right now, and and so I think we put a burden on people um, with our ability to rush the ball, and the wind kind of adversely affects the pass game and so they're, they're the team that really throws it more effectively than us. We saw the wind uh, affect the, the punt there by Jason Vanderlin. Uh, Michigan Tech able to take advantage and, and they'll score first. Uh, they'll score on the first play of the second quarter, 14 to nothing lead. Uh, what, what was the focus of your team then in, in coming back from that deficit? You know, uh, just hang in there, but we, we made our share of mistakes. Um, you know, we were able to run the ball here. Corey Ringer knocks off 25, 30 yards. And, and uh, we had a hard time containing them early. Uh, their quarterback's a really good player, and, and uh, we're in man coverage here, and we get beat. And, and so they, they, they knew how to pick, uh, pick the opportunities to, to pressure our, our man structure. And, and here Dante Ingraham finally gets us on the board, and, and here's a big turnover and leads to an Austin Cantola field goal. But that put it to 14 to 10, and uh, then we have this turnover here with a chance to go ahead. And, they end up scoring right before half, and we're down 21 to 10. And um, at halftime, we just talked about just hanging in there and doing the things we need to do to, to effectively, uh, effectively control the game. They went up 27-10 right here on a Tyler Scarlett touchdown run. But from that point forward, uh, really the defense in the second half was able to shut down Michigan Tech. Yeah, you know, uh, we we you know had three turnovers, critical turnovers. There was one there where the ball just kind of tipped away from us, and they they. Uh, able to do the things they need to do. This was the 27 to 10 score here. And then after that, you know, we got it going and we controlled the game from that point on. You get a big interception uh, here from A.J. McEwen after the touchdown and uh, certainly a, a big turning point in the game uh, helped you helped you grab the lead. Yeah, you know, Jamal made a great catch there. Here Jason scores. Uh, and then right away they turn around and throw this pick here on on a critical play. And, and uh, A.J. said the propensity to to pick the ball off a lot, we score again, and then um, in the in the fourth quarter, first possession of the fourth quarter, we score to finally take the lead. You had a fumble, but the defense again steps up, uh, stops Michigan Tech uh, in the red zone on downs, and uh, certainly uh, you have to be pleased with the defensive performance in the second half. Yeah, you know, Coach uh, Coach Curley had to make a choice on on fourth and short to whether to go for it and try to take the lead or or uh, turn to you know t try to kick a field goal, and they ended up turning. The ball over on downs, and then we killed the last seven and a half minutes, and and uh, drove all the way down to probably their five or so, and then we we're able to take that uh, that victory knee. Talk again about the the play of your offensive line, 300 yards rushing, and a, a couple changes up front this past week. Yeah, Cody uh, Dingleday got his first start there, and uh, I think that's the first time I've ever seen it, said his name right too, but. Uh, he, uh, he's from Lance, Michigan, which is probably 30 minutes from Houghton. So he was coming back home, and he got to start at center. And, and uh, that's huge, the way he played. And uh, Dave Gifford also started for us at guard. And so we had some guys that were out for that game. And, and uh, hopefully we get healthier. I think we do this week. But uh, 
all in all, those guys performed very admirably. Another tough GLIAC North Division matchup, it seems like, every week uh, comes down to the last, last few plays of the game and, and certainly uh, another big test coming up this week in Wayne State. Yeah, Wayne State's um, obviously got great athletes. Um, last year we were able to go there and beat them, but uh, they're coming back here uh, for, for some revenge, and, and uh, they've got a couple of my former high school players who are really good, Tony Davis and Dominic Maybanks are two of their leading guys, and David Churchwell's on defense, who played for me there at Muskegon High School. So it's always a fun deal when they come and, and get to coach against them. But uh, I know Coach Winters does a great job, and their staff will be ready. And and uh, I know I know they'll come and, and really think they can knock us off. Kids Day here at Top Tiger Field, a noon start on Saturday as the Bulldogs take on Wayne State. Uh, as you get ready for this matchup against the Warriors, uh, talk about being able to play at home after after two tough road games. Man, I'll tell you, it's been, uh, you know, we've played three home games and it feels like we've been playing here now for for like seven years or so. But uh, it's been uh, it's been quite the task. You know, we went to Ohio for overnight trips and got home late Sunday morning and then this trip to Michigan Tech. And, and so it's been tough. Our kids have handled very, very well. Um, and, uh, you know, we've only had the one GLIAC loss um, on the road. And, and uh, we feel good about coming home now because we, we played Grand Valley and played well at home. So I think we've got a different sense of confidence. And, and so we're excited to uh, play, play at home at noon. Not only did uh, your team have to bounce back uh, in, Mi uh, in Michigan Tech uh, from a 17-point deficit, also uh, bouncing back from a loss at Hillsdale. Just talk about that week leading up to the game and, and how the preparation was. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I, I've had the good fortune of not having back-to-back -back losses since 2001. So every time we're off a loss, I'm like, dang, I don't want to, you know, I want to keep that streak alive and and not have those back-to-back -back losses. But uh, you know, it, it, Hillsdale was a tough, tough loss, and for our kids to to hang in there and go to Michigan Tech and after not beating them there for 15 years and and getting that victory, it keeps us in the race too. Uh, you know, now we're five and two and. And we're in second place in the GLIAC North, and Saginaw's got to take that trip to Tech, so we're, we're Husky fans for, for this week. But, uh, you know, it, it keeps us, keeps us uh, with hopes alive. Um, you know, if we would have lost that game, it, we really would have been playing for just pride. Um, so now there's pride and there's hopes that, uh, you know, we got an outside chance to get in the tournament if we can win, you know, the last three. And, and so there's a lot still to play for. You got uh, Wayne State this week on the road at Northwood, and then wrap up the regular season against Northern Michigan. Now, what's the focus? What does it take to win these three ball games? Well, you know, you got to win them, the, win the first one, and so Wayne State has our uh, undivided attention. And and after that, if we can get that one, then we know what happened with Northwood last year, and and then uh, the finale, you know, when Northern Michigan beat Wayne up there last uh, Saturday. So, you know, this is the GLIAC North, and. Um, Anybody can get anybody at any given day. So you just got to be ready to, to put your best foot forward and, and play your best game. And, and we, still, uh, we still got you know, a lot more we can do to play our best game together in all three units. Well, Coach, congratulations again on the win. Best of luck against Wayne State this Saturday at home. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.